Whether you're new to Dead by Daylight or you're a long-time player, pretty much everyone knows that the hillbilly used to be a very popular killer, effectively being the community's favourite, striking a seemingly perfect balance of being strong but not unfair or overbearing. He was fun for both sides with a low skill floor and a high skill ceiling. Many players considered him to be the perfect killer, or at least the closest DBD has ever been to creating the perfect killer. Yet, nowadays, seeing a hillbilly in your matches is a rarity. For old players, the extinction of the hillbilly felt like a snap of the finger rather than a gradual decline, and new players are left wondering how on earth this killer captured the community's hearts and how he fell so far down to where he is now. So, let me explain to you the downfall of the hillbilly. The hillbilly was the third ever killer added in Dead by Daylight, coming after the trapper and the wraith, and right from the very beginning, he was meant to be a knockoff Leatherface, as of course, Behaviour couldn't get the rights to the real Leatherface yet due to the game's player base and therefore profits still being tiny. While the Hillbilly's release kit was slightly different to what you're familiar with today, he hasn't had very many changes at all over the course of Dead by Daylight's lifespan. In fact, until the patch where the devs randomly decided to gut him, he received no changes outside of bug fixes. Or at least, as far as I can tell. If there were balance changes, they aren't documented anywhere I can find. The Hillbilly's playstyle was immediately much different than that of the Trapper or the Wraith. His map pressure with the movement speed from chainsawing was completely unmatched, even the Wraith's cloaked movement speed was nothing compared to it. The chainsaw also brought on a new threat, insta-downs. The ability to instantly take a survivor from full health to the down state without dealing with on-hit bursts alone made Hillbilly an appealing pick for killers. Players with poor positioning who found themselves unable to reach a pallet or window in time once the killer found them would find themselves punished, not by losing a health state and zooming across the opposite side of the map, but instead with an immediate down. For lower skilled survivors, it was a bit of a shock, with less confident loopers resorting to dropping pallets like flies in order to avoid that chainsaw. Speaking of pallets and chainsaws, as I'm sure a lot of you know, back in the day, pallet break speed was significantly slower. It was horribly slow. But another perk of using the Hillbilly's chainsaw was that it broke pallets much faster than regular kicking. In fact, I think his chainsaw broke pallets at the same speed it does nowadays, which was far more valuable back then, as kicking pallets was like twice as long than what it is now. Meanwhile, higher skilled survivors found his more punishing insta-down ability much more fun to play against in chase than traditional basic attack killers. There was still plenty of room for counterplay, but the stakes were much higher with that one shot, and simply dropping pallets instantly was a good way to leave your team defenseless late game so there was more emphasis on efficiency. Weaving in window loops as much as possible before eventually dropping that pallet after running the loop as dry as possible was the way to handle him. On the other side of the coin though, higher skilled hillbillies were able to enjoy a high skill ceiling which rewarded their dedication well, the prime example being the ability to chainsaw all the way around certain loops. When executed effectively, the killer can turn what would be a survivor's most valuable asset, loops, into a down, or at the very least force a pallet out much faster than if they were to chase a survivor on foot. While this sudden table turner could sometimes come as a bit of a shock to the survivor on the receiving end if they weren't expecting it, being downed like this never felt cheap or frustrating because you could visually see it coming. You understood how difficult it was to execute this, and with fast enough reactions, it was preventable. Unlike, for instance, the twins nowadays where you visually see Victor pounce way past you, but all of a sudden the game just teleports him onto your back or downs you. Again, while hillbilly players with higher skill could apply immense pressure on survivors and mistakes would be punished severely, there was always something survivors could do so it never felt unfair. In some ways, the hillbilly reached a sweet spot between the nurse and the huntress, where survivors weren't completely at the mercy of the hillbilly's mistakes to survive, unlike the nurse, but Billy also wasn't completely reduced to dirt depending on the map or survivor's positioning, like the huntress. The reason I mention the huntress here is because, in the old school days, the top three killers were generally considered to be the Nurse, Hillbilly and the Huntress. They were considered the Holy Trinity, the only killers that posed a real threat. Even in those days, some killers were absolute jokes and the meta was set in stone. The Wraith was a prime example of this, being horrendous for years, far weaker than he is today. I'll link my video where I go in depth on the Wraith's history in the description below.
Although Base Kit Hillbilly was loved by pretty much everybody, there were a few add-ons that, when combined, changed his ability in a drastic enough way that some people did think it pushed him too far towards the point of overbearing and frustrating. The main problem combo being Instasaur. You see, the Hillbilly's add-ons are not the same as they were back in those days, and while no add-ons do that anymore without extreme gimmicks, some add-ons used to speed up the rate at which the Hillbilly could rev up his saw to start sprinting and or down someone. But when combining two rev speed add-ons, the Hillbilly could go from walking normally without using his ability to chainsawing pretty much instantly, hence the nickname Instasaur. The reason this add-on combo caused frustration for people was because it shortened the amount of time survivors had to reach a window or a pallet, resulting in them dying in situations that normally would have been totally fine against other add-ons. This issue was only exacerbated by the old version of Tinkerer, which had a completely different effect to what it does nowadays. Original Tinkerer Add-ons that affect the charge time of your power are 10% more effective. This of course meant that users could and would stack two rev speed add-ons alongside Tinkerer to limit that window of safety for survivors even further. While Instasaur Billy did cause some frustration, even that combo was nowhere near as frustrating as many other things in the game at that time. For instance, Iridescent Hatchets, which used to only reduce the Huntress's default hatchet count by two and could be paired with Infantry Belt for four insta-down hatchets without reloading. The Hillbilly remained to be a safe, consistent and popular killer for years. The only slight issue was that previously mentioned Instasaur combo, but even that still had some degree of counterplay. Things didn't need to change, but they did anyway. On the 28th of July 2020, patch 4.1.0 released, where, out of the blue, the devs randomly brought in a whole host of changes to the Hillbilly. What were they? Nerf added a heat meter to the Hillbilly's chainsaw. Nerf. Filling the heat meter causes the chainsaw to overheat, disabling the ability until it cools down. Nerf. Many of his best add-ons were removed. Nerf. Many of his new add-ons have downsides to them. In fact, let's go through some of these add-on changes to really put into perspective how much they nerfed him. Long Guide Bar. Renamed to Heavy Clutch. Nerf no longer increases the range of the chainsaw's attack. Instead, it now reduces the chainsaw's collision box. Nerf moderately reduces steering while chainsaw sprinting. Spark plug renamed to junkyard air filter. Nerf no longer makes the chainsaw rev up faster. Instead, it now makes the chainsaw take longer to overheat. This was one of the Hillbilly's best add-ons as part of the Instasaw combos. Now, it only slightly offsides a downside to the base ability that never used to exist. So yes, that's a nerf. Depth Gauge Rake Renamed to Big Buckle Nerf no longer reduces the stun penalty when bumping into objects. Instead, it now reduces the killer's terror radius by 8 meters, but only while the chainsaw is overheated. Primer Bulb Renamed to Punctured Muffler Nerf no longer makes the chainsaw rev up faster. Instead, it now increases the rate the heat meter cools down. Another one of his best add-ons being reduced to dealing with the overheat mechanic. Grizzly Chains, renamed to Leafy Mash. Nerf, no longer applies a debuff to survivors hit with the chainsaw that reduces their generator repair speed. Instead, it now gives the killer the undetectable status effect for 15 seconds after hitting a survivor with the chainsaw. Rusted Chains, renamed to Mother's Helpers. Nerf, no longer applies the mangled or anti-heal debuff to survivors who are hit with it. Instead, it now makes the killer move 0.2 meters per second faster while a flashlight is actively being shun on the killer. Thompson's Mix, renamed to Pig House Gloves. Nerf, no longer increases the chainsaw's rev speed. Nerf, no longer reduces the chainsaw's cooldown. Instead, it now reduces the speed at which the chainsaw overheats while revving. Carburetor Tuning Guide This used to be the Hillbilly's best add-on, so get ready for this. Renamed to Tuned Carburetor. Nerf No longer reduces the chainsaw's cooldown. Nerf No longer reduces the stun penalty when bumping into objects. Nerf No longer reduces the sound made by the chainsaw. Buff Increases the chainsaw's rev speed more than it used to. Nerf permanently reduces the hillbilly's movement speed by 5%.
Keep in mind this entire time the only things that ever caused any issues were the Instasaur add-ons, which were these ones shown on screen now. Instead, the devs negatively changed all of these add-ons shown on screen now and nerfed the base ability itself. Immediately, the entire community expressed how badly they hated these changes. Yes, Instasaur and the rev speed add-ons needed some looking at, but nerfing so many add-ons that were in a totally fine spot was ridiculous. But the main issue everybody had was the base kit nerfs. Base kit Hillbilly was the most loved killer in Dead by Daylight, and the devs came out of the blue and nerfed him in ways that made zero sense whatsoever. Just like not being subbed to the channel makes zero sense if you're enjoying these videos. Players felt that restricting how often Hillbilly could use his saw and the ways he could use it in just made him feel noticeably worse to play. With revving overheating the chainsaw much faster than actually sprinting with it, many different tricks and mind games became more punishing and less viable for Billy players. Older Billy players felt like their dedication and mastery of the killer was being rewarded with a slap in the face, and the concept of nerfing Billy's base kit at all, whether it be big or small, rubbed many people the wrong way as he simply didn't deserve them. And so, the hillbilly's pick rate plummeted. Keep in mind the hillbilly already doesn't feel very nice to play as. The awkward limping from his camera feels absolutely horrible when you're playing as him. It feels nauseating and makes your movement speed feel lower than what it actually is. The sudden increase in sensitivity when you first start chainsawing just for it to suddenly then be reduced when you're actually in the sprint feels really awkward as well. And of course bumping into a wall puts him in a short stun which doesn't feel nice either. And he was no longer worth the hassle anymore. Meanwhile, the developers defended these changes, stating, You have to try to overheat your chainsaw. Like, you are doing it on purpose. Which, in itself, was a ridiculous point to make. If the devs somehow deemed the hillbilly as nerf-worthy, why would they then follow through with this nerf, believing that it doesn't achieve anything anyway? What a ridiculous waste of development time and outright embarrassing design philosophy. In the interest of fairness, in the rest of this clip he follows up with, Now, that being said, is it like a good mechanic? Does it do anything useful? No, not really. Uh, it, it could leave, but that's not the way that this works. Like, people don't put something out there and, like, try it and see that, like, it's meh, it's okay, and then, like, just remove it. Like, a lot of time and effort goes into that kind of thing. What is much more likely is to see sort of an improvement or attempts an improvement over time, which is kind of what's already happened. So there you go. Which is a very fair and realistic point to make, which clearly shows that this wasn't a unanimous decision by the team. Some of the developers clearly disagreed with the changes. But as of right now, in December 2022, over two entire years since these nerfs happened, the previously mentioned improvements are yet to be seen. In the follow-up patches, some of the reworked add-ons were changed further, and his base kit was nerfed even further by making the chainsaw cool down slower, so overheating was more likely. While these nerfs began a very sudden and sharp decline in hillbilly players, it wasn't the only contributing factor to people leaning away from the hillbilly. As time progressed, more and more players began getting better and better at the game, with more and more survivors learning how to loop effectively at all levels of play, and more survivors learning how to incorporate windows into their loops efficiently instead of just relying on dropping pallets. Windows are the key counter to chainsaws, and window looping is the key way survivors can shut down any killer that has a chainsaw, so players better learning how to use the hillbilly's weaknesses didn't help much either. It doesn't just stop at survivors either though, with more and more killers being added into the game, killer players also gravitated towards other characters as well. Whether it just be characters they personally enjoy better, or simply going for stronger and easier killers. Keep in mind, while playing the hillbilly at a basic level is fairly easy, mastering him takes a tremendous level of skill and practice. Why bother spending hours learning how to curve with the hillbilly's chainsaw when you can just click on the blight instead? He's even stronger than the hillbilly, and while the blight is certainly not the easiest killer in the game, he is ridiculously easy when compared to the hillbilly. Simply put, there are new killers in the game that can get more value with less investment than Billy, so why would anyone even bother with him? Of course, Billy is still a decent killer and he's far from unplayable. 
but his downsides and learning curve make him so unappealing to play that he has become a rarity in today's day and age. Something I didn't even realise until playing Belly for this video is that his ability is so much more bugged than it used to be too. If a survivor stands too close to a wall while Billy chainsaws, it will often just count as him hitting the wall when he very clearly hit the survivor instead. And he isn't even safe chainsawing around the map anymore as invisible walls, tiny random props and even literal leaves above his head that aren't touching him stop the sprint and stun him. So that leaves one question. Is the hillbilly better off getting the nerfs reverted or is he better off keeping them and receiving some other changes to make up for it? Let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for sticking to the end. If you have any other things you'd like me to discuss in a similar style to this video, be sure to let me know. You can catch me live on twitch.tv slash